Hi, my name is Michael Wilde, this is Nuke, and we're going to talk about Nuke for texturing. Cool, so let's get started. So Nuke is a great asset when it comes to texturing as a kind of supplementary software that can do some things that Mari or other pieces of software can't, or it can do what they can do but better and more helpful for your workflow. So let's have a look at that. Cool. So to get an image into Nuke, first and foremost, you need to set down a read node. So to do that, you can either press tab, read, or you can press R on the keyboard and that will bring up this UI. So I'm going to bring in my bump here. Uh, I've already imported my color, which is here. As you can see, it's got these four hashtags. That is basically the way that Nuke reads UDIMS. So you can see it's picking up 1001 to 1011. I can click off sequences and you will see that it will offer me these individual images, but I want to bring them in as a sequence. So I'm going to click that. These text files, which have been made by Arnold, do not sequence for some reason, but these EXRs do. Cool. So I can press one on my keyboard to view that, or I can press one to switch back. I can also press two, and then I've got two viewers, and I can, if I click off, then I can set switch between those. Cool. So let's have a look at my color. Um, if I double click that on the right, it brings up the properties for this node. So you can see I've got the file name here. I've got the image size, which is 8K, which is right. I've got the frame range. And finally down here, the most important one is I've got color space. It's an EXR, so it's brought it in as linear, which is great but often I will just tick that to raw so I know there's no color space conversion happening on it. If I tick that off and change this to JPEG, uh, sorry, not JPEG, sRGB, you will see that it changes the color space to sRGB, but I'm gonna switch that back to default and change that to raw. So especially with things like TIFF, which can, or any file format, which can be different color spaces, sometimes it's important to keep an eye on this to make sure that everything is right. Cool, so now I've read something in, how would I write that out after I've made my changes? So reading and writing are the two things in Nuke. So if I hit write, then I can write this out now. It's an export node basically. So this is very similar. It's got the same thing. It's got the same option. So I'm gonna just copy and paste the file path and paste that in. I'm gonna call it cull underscore nuked. And it will fill in the rest of this because it sees it's an EXR. It's gonna give me the options of EXR writing out. So I can change the bit depth, for example. Um, I've got the color space up here. So yeah, when I import, I will often import as raw. And then when I export, I will also export as raw. So I know there's no color space conversion. Um, that's all I'm gonna talk about for color space on this because I could do a whole video on that. Um, it's a horrible, horrible subject. Anyway, so moving on. So we've imported and we've exported. Oh, sorry, to actually export, you click this render button here and then it will tell you which, what the frame range that you wanna export is. And I would click okay and it would write these out to this file path. Cool. So very quickly, let's talk about how Nuke actually uses UDIMS um, and when you bring in an image that is a sequence of multiple UDIMS and how you can view that. So because Nuke is traditionally a more compositing based piece of software, which uses frames, we've got this timeline here, which currently is set from 1001 to 1011 because that was the frame range of the images that I brought in. So if I scroll along, then I can see the next patch or UDIM. I can scroll along again to see them all. So because the operation that I write out will also be this frame range, 1001 to 1011, then anything that I do in this node tree will affect every single patch, which is why it's so useful because you can import hundreds of UDIMs at once across multiple channels. So I've got my curl, I've got my bump, and you can just set it off to do that. You can also have multiple write nodes. So if I just copy one here, you can have you can select multiple write nodes. And if you go up to render, render selected write nodes, you can render those all out at once. It's so quick to get a lot of operations done on multiple channels and UDIMs. This is really important when you've got big scenes, especially in the visual effects industry with some creatures and stuff that you're working on now. Sometimes it can be 10, 20, 50, 100 UDIMs, um, all 8K. So Mari just doesn't handle that very well, whereas Nuke can um, and quite quickly. So next up, say for example, so these are 8K images. I can tell that because if I look at my viewport, I've got in the top right corner, it tells me the image size of what I'm currently viewing. So say for example, I wanted to de-res these to 4K. So I can do that inside of Mari, but sometimes it's easier to do it because you can batch multiple things. So I can bring in all my color maps, I can bring in color, I can bring in bump, um, I can bring my normal, I can bring in any channels um, and do them all at once. So to change something down, you have to reformat it. So if I drop down a reformat node by pressing tab and searching, I've got this reformat node. So if I double click that, it's got the options up here. So automatically it's filled it into this. Uh, I don't want that, I want 4K. If I scroll down here at the bottom, I've got 1K, 2K, I don't have 4K. So to make a new format, say for example, you want a custom one, you just click here and you go new. So I'm gonna call this 4K and I'm gonna change this to 4096 by 4096 if my maths does me right. 
click OK on that. And now I've got this new preset here, which will always be there. Cool. So now if I look at the top right, you can see it's 4K. Uh, if I press 1 on this one, 8K. If I view this one, yeah, you can see it's reformatted it properly. So now when I'm writing these out, so, so for example, I'm going to write this out as cull 4K. Perfect. So that's one of the operations I will often use Nuke for. Um, but we can do more than that. So because Nuke is nodal, I should probably have mentioned this earlier, we've got the arrows that flow down. So if I just drop down, say I can get this out of the, the node tree by just pulling it out and I can drop it in by clicking it on the arrow there. So next up, let's talk about the blur node. So I will often use the blur inside of Nuke over Mari purely because it's non-destructive. So I've tabbed and typed in blur there. So to get this in, I can either drag the arrow there and I can drag the arrow here and now it's in the flow or I could have just dropped it on. Cool. So why is this different to Mari's filter Gaussian blur? Well, because Mari's Gaussian filter blur, don't think those are words, Mari's Gaussian blur filter, there we go, is destructive. So when you do it, it applies it to whatever layer or node you're working with and you cannot undo it. I mean, you can undo it in the history, but you can't just turn it off and on. Whereas with Nuke, I can just press D on a node and it's disabled and that node is turned off. So here I'm not, I'm going to view it by pressing one on it and then I'm going to Gaussian blur it up. As you can see now it's blurry. So if I press D on that, you can see the difference. So I can just deactivate this, um, which is the beauty of Nuke. It's not destructive, everything that you do in here. So I often use this on masks and stuff like that. I will import my mask and maybe just apply a Gaussian blur to things. Uh, maybe I'll play with like the exposure and stuff just to play around with masks. Um, and then I'll just write them out and re-import them to Mari. Cool. So how would I play with things like the exposure or color grade something? So you've got two nodes that I use often. We've got the grade and we've got the color correct. So let's talk about color correct first. So if I press tab, I can type color correct and bring it up. It's spelled with the American color, which is wrong. Or you can press C and it will drop one down automatically for you. I can plug that in now. And if I view that, we can see what it does. So here we've got a lot of option boxes. It's the same four options, but for different. So it's got my shadows, midtones, and highlights, or you can do it for everything. So say for someone to crank, crank up the saturation, oh, it looks like a bad fake tan, or you can play with the contrast, bring the gamma down, up, shake it all about again. So that looks heinous, but let's say, for example, I knew that this was a little bit too dark in renders. I could just drop down a color correct by pressing C and I could just bring the gain up. So say, for example, look, David said to me, they're like, we need it up by 1.5. There we go. I can do that exactly. So I can do that inside of Mari, but the beauty of this is I can do a lot of operations at once, non-destructively, and I can see very easily what's going on. So another one is the grade node that I talked about. So the grade has a few other options that the color correct doesn't. So we can change a black point, white point, lift. We've got gain again, we've got multiply, we've got offset and we've got gamma. Cool. So two nodes that I use every now and then. So let's talk about the shuffle node next. That's this little thing. It's overly confusing, but when you get it, you get it. Um, so what the shuffle node is basically, it can shuffle the channels of your image. So if we look on the right, we've got the R, the G, the B and the alpha coming in. And then on the right hand side, so the red is coming in as red, the green is coming in, going out as green, and the blue is coming out as blue. And alpha, in, out. Cool, so if I click one on this, I'm gonna view it. It looks the same as this for now. So say for example, I wanted to just view the red channel. So I can click, also have the red going out as green, have the red going out as blue, and now I'm viewing just my red channel. Say for example, I wanted to get just out the green channel, I can do the same, and now this is the green. Um, and say, for example, I wanted to view the alpha, I can do the very same there. It's one at the moment, so it's not very exciting, but that's how you can shuffle out an alpha, which is super useful if you want to use an alpha for masking or other things like that. So that's why I think the shuffle node is super, super handy. Also, another thing, sometimes your images might not have an alpha. So if I hover over this, you can see down, oh, if I move the mouse, it's not going to work, but down there, you've got those four numbers, the red, the green, the blue, and the alpha, but sometimes your image might have an alpha of zero. So you can shuffle in an alpha of one, which can stop operations mucking up. So if I set this back to default, uh, so you can also see here, I've got zero and one. So I'm gonna view the shuffle node and I can change the, say I wanted to change the red to zero and now it's got no red at all in it. And say I wanted to change the red to one, then it's got a load of red in it. So this is really helpful. So say for example, you had an alpha, uh, you just wanted to flood the alpha with, with pure, one value, then you can just click one there and everything is one. Cool, so that's the shuffle node and that's super handy. 
So yeah, those are the base operations I use Nuke for when it comes to texturing. There are definitely some more case by case things and I can get very complicated node trees inside of Nuke sometimes. Um, but these are the basics and I think these are the things that are really handy to know to see how it can supplement your texturing. If this has been useful or there's anything else that you want me to make videos on, then please let me know in the comment section below. I've got some more that I'm currently planning on making or feel free to rip this video to shreds because it is the YouTube comment section after all. For more on me, you can head over to michaelwild.co.uk. There's a mailing list you can sign up to there if you feel you don't get enough spam in your inbox. Otherwise, have a great day. Take it easy.